Let's think of a common household appliance like a washer. We all have seen that when the switch of the washer is turned off, the basket of the washer slowly spins down as it loses rotational energy. But what if the washer were to suddenly spin up? Wouldn't that be surprising or even scary? In fact, there are stars out there in the universe known as pulsars that actually spin up even though they are losing rotational energy. But how does this happen? Before going ahead, let me first explain what a pulsar is. Imagine our sun were squished to the size of St. Louis and a powerful bar magnet were embedded into it. Furthermore, let's impart a tremendous amount of rotational energy to this object. We have what's known as a pulsar. Let's assume I'm a pulsar. The direction of my arms is the direction of the magnetic axis and this is the direction of my spin axis. Now, a pulsar spins, so let me spin. So as I spin, or in other words, as the pulsar spins, beams of magnetic radiation emanate from the poles of the pulsar. When the moving beam hits the surface of the Earth, somewhere in the lab, an astronomer detects them as pulsars. Now, over a long period of time, as the pulsar sheds off its magnetic energy, it slowly spins down. That's like the washer spinning down when the switch is turned off. But that's not the end of the story. Once in a while, the astronomer observes a sudden rise in the pulsar's pulse rate. But that's actually like the washer spinning up, even though it should be spinning down. What's happening? Friends, what's happening is known as a pulsar glitch phenomenon. In order to further understand how pulsar glitches happen, let's understand the structure of the star. A star consists of an outer crust made of nuclei of heavy metals like iron, and further in the inner core, there is what is known as a superfluid. Now, what's a superfluid? A superfluid is characterized by two major properties. One is that it experiences frictionless flow, and two is that unlike a normal fluid, it has different rotational properties. Let me explain. If you were to take a bowl of soup and set it in rotation, the soup in the bowl would rotate as a whole and form a single large vortex. However, if the rotating bowl had superfluid into it, then it's not that one big vortex is formed, but instead these tiny vortices are formed and they are large in number, and rotational energy is trapped in these tiny vortices. Now let's get back to the story of the pulsar. So we had an outer crust made of iron nuclei or any other heavy metal nuclei and an inner superfluid core. In the region between them, there is a, a surface or a layer where the superfluid and the heavy nuclei lattice coexist. So as the superfluid generates its vortices, these in general tend to move outward and they are trapped in this lattice. But once in a while, when there is a star jolt or star quack, these trapped vortices get unpinned and they travel towards the surface. Once they hit the surface, they transfer their rotational energy to the surface and the outer crust speeds up. This is observed in the lab by the astronomer as an increase in the pulsar's pulse rate. Therefore, a pulsar is actually like a mystical washer which actually spins up even though it's losing its rotational energy. Pretty cool, isn't it?